Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From millions of dollars of lost treasure to sunken cities, here are 10 unbelievable pirate discoveries. Number 10. Captain Kidd's Treasure Captain Kidd once hunted pirates for a living, but turned to the dark side in the late 1600s, attacking merchant vessels in the Caribbean and reaching as far as Madagascar. He returned to America and was arrested though, sent back to England and hanged for his crimes in 1701. There were a number of accounts of the treasure he accrued during his piracy, and stories of where he hid it. In 2015, researchers announced the discovery of what they believed to be some of his treasure in a sunken ship off the coast of Madagascar. In what's thought to be the wreck of his ship, the Adventure Galley, explorers found a 107-pound silver bar, which is inscribed with the letters S and T. The bar itself has been traced to 17th century Bolivia, and the ship has all the hallmarks of one built in England. If, as researchers suspect, this truly is the remains of his ship, there could be much more treasure waiting to be uncovered. He was known to have raided a number of ships that were loaded with gold and silver, much of which has never been retrieved and is still out there, waiting to be found. Number 9. A Skeleton in 2015, council workers were carrying out survey work to prepare for building an extension to a primary school in Edinburgh when they made a gruesome discovery, what is believed to be the corpse of a pirate. The bones have been tested and found to have been from a man in his 50s who lived during the 16th or 17th century. He had been killed on a gibbet, which is a structure used for execution at the nearby New Haven Harbor and buried in this unmarked grave. Researchers believe that his burial here, as opposed to at a graveyard, suggests that his remains would have been displayed alongside others in full view of approaching ships to deter pirates from approaching. By showing off pirate remains, it was hoped that other pirates would get the message and stay away. With Edinburgh's long history in maritime affairs, it's quite possible that there are many more bodies still hidden in the region, so who knows what may be found next. Number 8. Underground Smuggling Network Cornwall in the southwest of England was a popular place for pirates and smugglers to bring their ill-gotten gains ashore. In 2008, a crew of builders working on the renovation of a waterfront warehouse in the town of Penzance found two escape hatches that led underground. Appropriate name, right? Pirates of Penzance. The two-foot square holes have access to two tunnels that stretched beneath the roads to a local pub about 300 yards away. The pub was known as a center of smuggling where crews such as the Benbow Brandy Men would secretly transport brandy, gin, and tobacco from the docks and evade having to pay taxes. The tunnels even had a secret spy hole in the pub so they could watch for authorities to ensure that they didn't get caught. The tunnels show how sophisticated smugglers were, but often they were forced to do this from necessity. Most people who turned to smuggling and piracy were farm workers or fishermen who helped pirates or traders to import the goods simply so they could avoid extreme poverty. Number 7. Maps when you think of pirates plundering treasure, the first things that spring to mind are chests full of gold and jewels, but they weren't necessarily the most valuable things on their minds. Bartholomew Sharp was an influential pirate from 1680 who traveled with his 300 men to Panama, where they captured a Spanish ship, the Trinity, and raided Spanish ships along the Pacific coastline of Central and South America. They kept detailed records of their exploits, but surprisingly, the object they were most excited about finding was actually an atlas full of Spanish sailing charts. In 1681, they found a Spanish ship, the Rosario, and quickly took control. They seized hundreds of jars of wine and brandy, a small amount of money, and left behind 700 slabs of dull metal they thought was tin, but later found out, to their regret, was actually unrefined silver. Still, their best find during the attack was what Sharp described as a Spanish manuscript of prodigious value. One of his men wrote that it was a great book full of sea charts and maps, containing a very accurate and exact description of all the ports, soundings, creeks, rivers, capes, and coasts belonging to the South Sea. Not only was this invaluable for navigating the waters, but it's also thought to have saved Sharp's life. He had some of the images recreated as a gift to King James II, and was so graciously received that the king overlooked the pirate's misdeeds. Number 6. The Ski Dam with some pirates living more than 350 years ago, many artifacts that found their way to the seabed have now been covered over, but a storm in 2018 disrupted the sands around Cornwall and led to an amazing discovery. Divers spotted objects such as hand grenades and cannons, which had come from the wreck of the Ski Dom, a ship that had sunk off the Cornish coast in 1684. 
Once a pirate ship that had been stolen from the Dutch in 1683, it was recaptured by the Royal Navy and used to transport goods until it was sunk by a storm near Dollar Cove. The recent storm dislodged a number of artifacts and two 17th century hand grenades made from a hollow iron shell and filled with gunpowder were also found on a nearby beach after having been washed ashore from the exposed wreck. Despite being damp and hundreds of years old, this triggered a response from the bomb disposal squad who had to investigate to ensure local beachgoers were safe from any other objects that could have been found. Number 5. The Pirate Executions of 1718 it's well known that when the authorities were able to catch pirates, they usually made an example of them, but documents have been found that survive from 1718 that show that that year was a particularly brutal one. Steed Bonnet was a famed pirate of the time, having been involved in the siege of Charleston, South Carolina alongside Blackbeard. He earned a pardon but soon returned to pirating again and was ultimately caught by the Charleston pirate hunters during a battle on the Cape Fear River. Taken back to stand trial, he and 29 of his crew were sentenced to death and hanged in November 1718 at White Point. They had been sentenced by Judge Nicholas Trott, who according to court documents held 13 trials that November and condemned at least 49 pirates to death by hanging, all of which happened at White Point, a site at the southernmost tip of the peninsula that was visible to all watercraft that approached the town. This is thought to have been one of the bloodiest months in the fight against piracy and one that helped deter future attacks. Unhappy with the extreme rule of law in the town, the residents overthrew the government 12 months later. So, in a way, the pirates' final act led to what they had been fighting for all along. Number 4. Visiting Japan Pirates operated across the world, and recent evidence came to light that showed the first Australian ship to venture into Japanese waters was run by a crew of pirates escaping from Tasmania. There had long been a tale of a ship of convicts venturing into feudal Japan, which at the time was isolated from the rest of the world, but most had dismissed it as nothing more than legend. New translations of samurai accounts from the time have, however, shown that it did actually happen. The captain, William Swallow, hijacked the Cyprus in 1829 while it was transporting convicts from Hobart to Makarie Harbor, and they began a voyage that took them all the way to Japan. En route, they anchored near the town of Mugi on Shikoku Island, where records show the samurai sent one of their own, disguised as a fisherman, to investigate what this ship was. The samurai reported an unbearable stench near the ship, and a young-looking skipper who smoked tobacco from a pipe and wore a scarlet woolen coat with cuffs embroidered with gold thread and silver-plated buttons. The pirates were tattooed and offered gifts to the samurai, but were asked to leave. They failed to go, though, and the samurai forces began to attack, firing cannonballs and damaging large sections of the ship. Eventually, the pirates left, never to return. The following year, Captain Swallow and his crew were tried in London for piracy, and two of them were the last people to ever be hanged for piracy in Britain. Number 3. Mass Burial Black Sam Bellamy was thought to have been the richest pirate ever, but all trace of him and his crew vanished following the wrecking of their ship, the Wida Galley, off the coast of Cape Cod in 1717. They had amassed a fortune worth around $120 million in today's currency, but it was only in 2018 that researchers discovered what had happened to them. The ship itself was found in coastal waters in 1984, and it's now thought that Bellamy's remains were found there, with tests underway to find out for certain. There was a lack of corpses found at the site, though, and it now appears that the bodies of at least 100 of those that drowned were washed ashore. They were given a land burial at a site in Massachusetts, and this graveyard has recently been rediscovered. The exact location is being kept a secret, but once excavations are complete, it's hoped that it will become a memorial site to the once fearsome crew. Number 2. The Queen Anne's Revenge the most famous pirate of all time, Blackbeard, was notorious for his brutality, the burning gunpowder in his beard, and his surprisingly educated demeanor. He and his crew terrorized the waters of North Carolina with their ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. Perhaps his most famous act was the Siege of Charleston in 1718, where the city was held hostage for several weeks while he demanded food, money, and supplies. Soon after this, he was forced to run his ship aground while attempting to enter Beaufort Inlet, and was lost to the ocean. In 1996, a salvage company revealed that they had discovered a shipwreck in the inlet, and as research has continued, it's now almost certain that this is the remains of the Queen Anne's Revenge. While there's been no official announcement of the discovery of treasure, they have recovered 24 cannons, a small anchor known as a grapnel, and a 12-foot-long anchor. 
It's amazing that these items are still intact after 300 years underwater, and researchers hope that there's still plenty more to find. Number 1. The Sunken Pirate City By the late 1600s, the natural harbor at Port Royal had become the center of the English presence in Jamaica. It was the second largest European city in the New World and soon became the notorious home of pirates and criminals. This soon became a dangerous place full of debauchery and was once described as the most wicked and sinful city in the world. It was renowned for its alcohol, in particular the Kill Devil Rum that would knock you out, and for the countless pirates and prostitutes that were based there. Piracy became so ingrained within the operation of the city that in 1675, famed pirate Henry Morgan became the lieutenant governor. He began to crack down on overt piracy but still allowed it to continue in the shadows. In 1692, it was struck by a massive earthquake, thought to measure around 7.5 on the Richter scale. Like the fabled city of Atlantis, supposedly punished for their sins and because the city was built on sand, liquefaction struck and everything, including people, were sucked into the ground. Geysers erupted, everything collapsed, and tsunami waves covered the area. By the time things had settled, 33 acres of the city remained underwater, 2,000 people were killed, and the cemetery fell into the sea and the bodies floated up and mixed with the drowned. The remaining parts of the city remained in use by pirates, but recently the submerged regions have become a popular destination for explorers. Treasures such as a pocket watch that stopped at the exact time of the earthquake have been found, and because of the way much of the city has been preserved, it's often compared to Pompeii for its wonders. It's now designated a National Heritage Site, so it's off-limits for most visitors. Local museums are home to a number of treasures that have been recovered, and it's one of the last places on Earth where a glimpse of true pirate life has been preserved. Thanks for watching! Is the pirate life for you? Let me know in the comments! Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you soon! Bye!